Hello everyone! Before we get today's episode going, I have some fun news to share with you guys. We have... Are you ready for this? Brand new merch! If you haven't had an opportunity to check out the merch shop at pmap.creator-brain.com, you would see that there is a wide range of amazing stuff done by some outstanding artists, such as the retro design done by Roya Shahidi, the wonderful human designs done by Elgis Grandpa and My Emerald Tears, and of course, the wonderful Mr. Moneybags design done by the wonderful Tipsy J Hearts. Well now... You can have a whole new meaning to streetwear with this wonderful new spray painted Mr. Moneybags design done by Drags. Inspired by the shirt that he draws for his persona, I saw that shirt and I instantly thought I need to have a Moneybags version of it. So I made sure to commission Drags to make this a reality and he knocked it out of the park. Available in t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, even pennants, which is a new one for me. That's, that's, that's interesting. You can find many different ways to rep this incredible design today. We even have a fun little snapback version of it that you should be repping on top of your head today. Seriously, Drags knocked it out of the park with this design, and I think that it would be a wonderful addition to your clothing collection today. So please go to pmap.creator-spring.com so you can order your new merch today. Welcome to the Postmodern Art Podcast, the podcast dedicated to giving artists who are wowing the world over the platform they deserve. I am your host, Nathan Raglan, and for today's episode, let's explore a person who takes her time to explore artists throughout history and some of their best works to simply ask the question, who arted? Today's guest is Kyle Wood, a K-5 art teacher and the host of the Who Arted Podcast, a weekly art history podcast that explores all different pieces and creators throughout the ages. Kyle is someone that has been gracious enough to let me appear on his podcast before, and considering the work that they are putting into this podcast, I knew it was only a matter of time before I brought him on the podcast, and boy can I tell you, we had a wonderful conversation. If you enjoy Kyle, make sure you support him and the podcast down in the links in the description below. If you enjoy this podcast, make sure you like, share, subscribe, or follow whatever audio streaming platform you prefer. Leave five stars wherever you can. I see that stuff, and I absolutely love and appreciate you guys for that. If you want to go a little bit further without support, maybe you should consider checking out the merch shop at pmap.creator-spring.com. For the past couple weeks, we've been talking about the newest design done by Drags, and there are still plenty of incredible designs that you need to be repping today. And look, if all you want is just a cool, calm, casual place where you can meet some of the other guests and have a fun time with a fun community, consider joining our Discord server, The Artist Sanctuary. The community that we have already cultivated in this place is an incredible one, filled with fun times, art, and memes that you all should absolutely be a part of today. But now, without further ado, please enjoy the Postmodern Art Podcast. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? I am doing all right, all things considered. Just, you know, taking it easy today, having this nice chill interview. After this, I got to edit this upcoming week's episode of the podcast. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, so, I'll... I'll let you handle how you want to introduce and all of that. Oh, and, I got absolutely. As long as I got like a little intro thing set up or whatnot. I don't know how many episodes or if, how if you. I don't know how often you've listened to the podcast or whatnot, but I got like a little way or flow about it or whatnot. But I mean, it, it'll be just natural, nat, natural, natural, calm, cool, casual, just you know, laid back vibe at the end of the day. So. Yeah, I I was actually listening to um I was listening to it today while I was I had to go into school and I was um you know, loading up the kiln and I was listening to your conversation with, um, oh, who was it? The latest episode. She was talking about character design and stuff yes, like that. Yes, Jay Fawn. Jay Fawn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, seems laid back. I'm, yeah. I'm good. Absolutely. I, I have to ask this just out of curiosity or whatnot. Like, I, I don't know how many episodes of the podcast you have listened to. Do you have, like, a personal favorite just from the ones you have listened to or whatnot? 
or is there like one that you just like, I was amazed you were able to, to have that kind of conversation? So I don't know. I mean, the first episode I listened to, you were talking to, um, you were talking to, I'm terrible with names. I understand. You were talking to an animator and just like the energy about it was, was really fun. I, it was some dude who does like animations and I, this is like getting back to what is it like six months ago when we first, um, okay. Okay. when we were first connecting, but that was a good one. Uh, this last one was nice and chill. I, yeah. um, there was someone else, um, what is her name? It was another one who does kind of like anime kind of characters and stuff. She was talking about like how she grew up. Um, she grew up like drawing with her dad and like, you know, got it like a surface tablet and started doing stuff. And um, I want to say her name was like an, it was an A name, like an Ashley or something like that. Or, okay. Oh, oh, Ash's um, art. Ash's art. Ash's art. There you go. Yeah, that was a nice one. <laughs> That was a fun one. That was a good one. And I thought whenever you were initially talking, like, you know, drawing with her dad or whatnot, I was also thinking you were talking about uh, Southpaws or whatnot, but that's that's a different guess. But either way, yeah, no, like, I I appreciate uh, I appreciate that you enjoyed that episode. I know I still am good talks with, uh, with Ash here and there or whatnot, so, I mean, you know, hearing that, you know, hearing that you're enjoying the episodes, that does mean a lot to me, though. <laughs> What I like about your episodes is like it it has that relaxed feel of just like talking with friends. Yes. You know what I mean? And that's where you kind of get that truer sense of like who's just a nice person who's creating good stuff and who's like that one who's like that that kind of pretentious one in the crowd. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like there there are different art artist types. Um and I I tend to like the ones that are a little bit more just laid back, down to earth, straightforward. Well, good, that. good. Well, hopefully today's episode could be a good example of that kind of vibe more than anything else. <laughs> we'll go for it. There you go. All right, Kyle, before we really get going, I must ask the icebreaker question of the podcast, if I may. Let's say you get to go to a desert island on your own accord. It's just you alone with your thoughts. You get to kick back, relax, breathe. Get to truly enjoy yourself for a little bit. With accommodations, obviously, you're not stranded. You're just getting the chance to really enjoy yourself for a little bit. To I help, like where you're going with this. Thank you. To help with whatever kind of mindset you want on this little personal paradise, you can bring one piece of media or one piece of art with you to help with whatever mindset you want. If given this opportunity, what would that one piece be? Oh, um, it, it would most definitely be a Blink-182 CD. Oh, okay. Okay. Any particular reason why them? Is that like your, your go-to like comfort band or something? Uh, I, it's, it's, it's a little bit of comfort band, but it's, it's also obviously high energy. Mm -hmm. So it just like, it, it keeps me like, it's what I listen to on my runs. It's what I listen to when I'm working out. It's what I listen to when I'm like depressed. Like it's, it was the music of my youth okay. and you know, music taps into that part of your brain from like, and the stuff that you listen to in your adolescence, especially it brings you back to a piece of that. I mean, there's that nostalgia factor and stuff. I, Blink is one of those bands that I could listen to for the rest of my life and be perfectly happy. I mean, I own markhop.us. Like, I, you know, I'm a huge fan of that band. I mean, that it's good to know that they, they've had such a sentimental part of your life, especially up to this point. Is there a particular album? If you had to narrow one down, I know you just said one, but if you had to narrow mm -hmm. one down to bring with you, what would it be? Oh, just just one. I'd probably go I I feel like it would be a cliche to say like Enema of the State but that's like such that's a solid album every single every single one. I mean that's when Travis joined the band and the drum the drum beats did get much more interesting. I yeah. mean definitely a fan of that. I, you know that whole like around 2000s, you know from Dude Ranch through like Take Off, like those were, those were good ones, you know. But I'd, I'd probably go right down the middle with Enema. All right, fair enough, fair enough. But nevertheless, a Blink One Eighty Two album. That is your answer. You're locking that in. 
I'm locking it in, yeah. Then if that's the case, I cannot think of a better way to start the Postmodern Art Podcast. Welcome, everyone. I am your host, Nathan Ragland. Uh, feel free to like, share, subscribe, or follow whatever audio streaming platform you prefer. Uh, you can support the podcast on Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash PMAP. And follow us on Twitter and Instagram at PostModArtPod for future updates and guest announcements, including today's guest. <clears throat> He is a teacher and host of the Who Arted Podcast, a podcast that explores artists throughout history and some of their best works. Welcome to the podcast, Kyle Wood! Thank you very much for having me. I, I appreciate being on this end of the conversation, for <laughs> one. Well, first off, thank you for your time. And yeah, because for those, I know I mentioned it before whenever I did appear on your podcast, but I've been on your podcast twice now, and both times have been wonderful experiences for me, getting to talk about incredible artists such as uh, Ai Weiwei and Andrew Fuller. And, you know, knowing kind of the 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 stuff that you are doing, especially with the Who Arted podcast and just like with your own personal life or whatnot, I knew I needed to have you on at some point to just talk about this kind of love for art and art history as a whole. But before we really divulge into the stuff you're doing nowadays, I want to go back just a little bit and learn more or less the origin story of Kyle. What got you interested in art and art history in the first place? Okay, so um, I guess it depends how far back do we want to go. Um, like, Growing up, actually, art was my worst subject really? in a lot of ways. Like, I was I was uh, very much, like, all throughout, like, junior high, high school and stuff. Like, I was that kid in, like, honors and AP everything, you know. But, like, in high school, I kind of got burned out with that. Okay. And so my senior year of high school, I took my first art class. And that was kind of just a nice break that was like the one thing in my schedule that I was taking because I enjoyed it not because like oh this will be on my college resume and this will like get me I don't know half a semester faster through the you know (laughs) academic um, goals like I don't know why in in like high school you're thinking like yes I can get three credits and then be in the workforce sooner mm. but like that seemed really important in those days um and you know after high school i i started off i was gonna i was gonna go to university of arizona i actually did go to university of arizona for about a month before i left on like a medical leave oh, wow. and and i during that during that leave i reconnected with my old friends from uh, terrible bands I played in. Um, I always joke, before I was an okay artist, I was a terrible musician. <laughs> and the like. there's very much truth in that. I love music. Right. I, I really do. But I learned very quickly that I don't love it enough. I, I, I played in some bands, and, like, I could keep up. But, like, I wasn't that guy for whom, like, the musical instrument becomes, like, an extension of their body. Like, I just, mm. I never had that kind of dexterity. And if I'm being 100% honest, I came to the realization that, like, I just didn't want it enough to put in the time and the effort to get there. Okay. So, so then I did always still enjoy the visual arts, though. And... I needed to be taking classes in order to like keep health coverage and all of that sort of stuff. And like the only classes that I was enjoying were the art classes. So I ended up going one of, one of my, um, one of my good friends kind of, uh, just pushed me through life at this stage. I'm like, you know, 19 years old, she's 20. And we referred to her as my life coach. She actually took my portfolio, drove me down to the Art Institute of Chicago. They used to have, I don't know if they still do, but they had these immediate decision days where you would just show up with your portfolio. They look it over. And after lunch, they're like, you're in or you're not. Okay. So, like, high stakes kind of thing. I had literally the minimal requirements for a portfolio for them to review. (laughs) Um, I didn't even have, like, a formal portfolio. I just had, like, a stack of some canvases and some papers that were literally tied together with a piece of twine. Oh, wow. (laughs) So dodgy looking. Um, Because also, like, this this was also the early 2000s. So I... 
I looked um I looked like a person of no fixed address. Like oh, okay. I was like the torn thrift store attire and just like stained everything and just like looked like I wandered in off the street. But they did look at my portfolio and for whatever reason I got in. And so then you know, I did the traditional like I did the the traditional pretentious art school kid thing where I was like, you know, I, I went through phases where it was just like whatever I happened to be studying in my first year art history survey course, I was like, that's the most brilliant thing in the history of the world. And mm. I'm going to be the next, you know, I'm going to be the next Van Gogh. No, I'm going to be the next Picasso. No, I'm going to be the next Roy Lichtenstein or whatever. You know, it was just like... I, I found the ideas behind, especially modernist and some postmodern stuff, to be just really interesting to explore. Um, then when you get outside of that academic bubble, you start to like, you know, I teach K-5. Right. And like, I don't get into those in-depth discussions with elementary kids you know, typically, like, there's only so much that they're going to put up with me rambling about art history. Right. <laughs> and so, so I just, I, I, I started looking for the fun facts, the interesting stuff that I could drop and, and share and that they would actually care about and respond to. And, you know, I just, I feel like so much of art history became that dull rarefied stuff that like you know people's eyes glaze over when you when you mention art history right but there's so much that is fascinating about it i mean like the like the scream has been stolen so many times the last time it went up for auction betting markets opened on whether it would be stolen before it could get to southern <laughs> and like like and it's not even like these amazing like papers like you see in the movies like in the 90s someone just propped a ladder up to the museum and climbed in through a second story window they actually left a note saying thank you for your bad security yeah. <laughs> as they took the, as they took the piece like i mean there are delightful and absurd stories that like most people never get to so i started making the podcast and yes the name is a fart joke but like i wanted it to be I wanted it to be like that different kind that's like more accessible. That's just the fun of it. Um, and shameless plug right now, because listeners might be interested um, on that topic of fun. Every March I do an arts madness tournament, yeah. like the college basketball thing, but brackets with 64 different artists for people to vote on their favorites. And if you participate, uh, you can fill out a form to say, like, which one you think will win. And if yours, if you correctly predict the outcome, I randomly select some people to send some Amazon gift cards to. So um, be sure to participate. I, I love to get love to get more people um, participating, sharing their thoughts. And it's cool to see some of the matchups uh, where you start to think, like, how do I even make sense of which is better between, like, Christo and Frank Lloyd Wright you know, or whatever it might be. I mean, I, I know your little story of the screen right there is probably going to give it at least like a, a number one you know position on the bracket more than anything else. <laughs> I, I, I do want to go back just a little bit, especially when we were talking about like, you know, <laughs> like first getting into like the field of art in general, like, or at least like, you know, like getting into the college for arts Institute in Chicago or whatnot. Um, because I can only imagine like, you know, especially what you were talking about kind of, you know, having this like loosely put together portfolio at that point yeah. or not um, looking, you know, like you didn't have an address, which I mean, some people might say homeless, but in your situation, I would call it starving artist. Um, <laughs> but nevertheless, like I, I can only imagine like, was that like kind of being accepted into that and kind of really being exposed to that kind of aspect of art? Was that more or less like, I guess a mental awakening for you from it to go from like a general love and maybe in passing, to a passion and then wanting to make art your career? You know, I think I think you tend to become passionate about the things that you get fixated on, the things that you get steeped in. The more mm -hmm. you, the more time you spend with something, the more you discover to appreciate about it. Right. You know what I mean? Like so many artists that I have looked at throughout 
throughout um, you know my my learning and my my growth, there are a lot of artists that I started off like, oh, wake me up when it's over, you know, <laughs> like erased de Kooning. I first looked at that and I was like, oh, that's that's terrible, and and never gave it the thought. But then when I when I forced myself to do the research and look at the story behind it, it's like, oh, there's something really beautiful and there's something thoughtful there. And for me, art um, art was something that is. I struggled to make sense of at first. Like I'm not an intuitive artist. I'm I'm not a particularly talented artist. I am pretty good at systems though. I am pretty good at analysis and figuring things out and figuring out the structures of things. And so like that's where my skill came in. I I I I got better through just like sheer force of will. You know, and putting in the time and putting in the practice because it was one of those things that just like early on, like it, it just didn't click with me right off the bat the way that it does with some other people. Right. You know, like you look at you look at some stuff and, you know, most people have this like gut visceral reaction and, um, you know. I've always joked that I, I've just been like dead inside since I was a child because like I just don't have that emotional resonance and that intuitive sense about stuff. Like okay. I have to look at it analytically and like when I'm creating my own artwork, I am very much mentally going through like, okay, what are the principles of design? And, you know, okay, what's the balance that's happening here? What's, you know, is this, do I want symmetrical or asymmetrical? And what's that going to do to the, what type of line is going to get at the overall goal of um, creating a sense of action here or to, to create that sense, like, um, to like my own personal artwork, what I, what I do tends to be kind of a mashup of different styles. And I very, very deliberately select every element. And I very, very deliberately have a very almost, almost scribbly sort of sketchy line in everything. Um, I, I very often will go back and revise lines to make them looser and sketchier because it's like, oh, I need that to convey that spontaneous feel that, you know, I very, very clearly and carefully plot out, <laughs> you know. Um, but it's one of those things where it was just like, it was the challenge for me. Okay. It was the, it was the challenge that really appealed to me. And, um, it, it it was the one that stuck. You know, like there were there were other things that like I kind of figured it out relatively quickly and I got bored with it. And and art is one of those things that just like there's always so much more to explore. And every time you think you are starting to make sense of it and understand it, you have this moment of realization that's like, oh, I am just beginning to understand. Right, right. I mean, especially with how the art world just kind of is, you know, with people with their different experiences and their interpretations, stuff like that. Like, that challenge is always going to be there, like, you know, when it comes to, like, examining art pieces or, like, even creating your own art, trying to find that, like, you know, sym you know symmetry, trying to see if you can have whatever message you want or lack of message that you want inside every single piece. I can see how that challenge is, like, more or less there. I, you know, I I've dabbled with art before. I mean, I know that, you know having that kind of challenge is always kind of at least for me like a little bit fun trying to be able to translate that and see how many people can kind of pick up on that interpretation you know so oh yeah absolutely and you know that that interpretive element is always so difficult because <laughs> you start to look at some stuff and it's like such a fine line between something that is clear enough for people to understand and stuff that's just like beating you over the head with it. Right. You no, know, like I look at Picasso's blue period and he painted it well, but like subtlety was not his thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm feeling sad, so I'm literally going to make everything blue. You know, like it but at the same time you look at some other stuff and it's like unless I have time to sit down and read like volumes of theory and criticism in history i cannot make sense of this yeah. because when you when i look at when i look at um you know rauschenberg erased de kooning like i said that was one that 
right off the bat, like there's there's quite literally nothing on the surface for me to connect to and make sense of. And I, I have to do my own outside research because my first conclusion was completely wrong. I first thought it was like iconoclasm and taking down that artist. And then it's like, no, this was a tribute to Rauschenberg, which is also very confusing. And, yeah. you know, it, it takes a while to just wrap your head around it. And like I said, the fact that it can continue to surprise me even though it's something that i am somewhat familiar with i love that absolutely how, love that in art how much of that mentality did you carry with you whenever you were composing some of your own art pieces because i have seen some of your art especially with the on the who arted uh podcast website you know you had some of your pieces on there how much of that mentality did you try to carry with you whenever you're trying to put that into your own art so the first painting that I, I made that I felt was actually reasonably not terrible was <laughs> um, was actually an art historical reference. It was it was based on it was based on um, Rodin's sculpture of the Burgers of Calais. Okay. And if you're not familiar with that story, love I love that sculpture. It is a sculpture of these heroic figures. You think burgers, it's it's not the food. The burgers were like the nobility in, in French society in like the 1300s or whatever. But like the, the, the city of Calais is surrounded and these town's leaders are told, you know, um, we'll spare the town if you give up six of the the leaders send them out with ropes around their necks and so the implication there is pretty obvious that yeah. these people are going off to die and rodan made this sculpture where those figures are showing a range of emotions where like some are standing tall and proud and some are like just cowering like you know, pooped their pants kind of pose. And like, that's probably the reality of the situation. And I, there was something about it that it was just like, that is so beautiful because it's not, these people were brave because they, they, you know, were unflinching and sacrificing themselves. It's mm -hmm. that these people knew the full implications of everything that was going to happen to them. They were rightly scared of that. Right. And pushed past it, which is like so much more heroic, in my mind, anyways. You know, it's it's like you know Chuck Close kind of said, the, the magic is so much more impressive when you understand all the work that goes into it. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, my first my first big painting I, at the Art Institute, I spent a month painting a version of the Burgers Calais of Calais, but like these bright colors almost like you know almost like it was done by a mexican muralist or something like that okay. like you know like a diego rivera version of rodan and right. it's like and and so in a lot of my work what i've been really interested in is a mashup of like these unexpected influences okay. and seeing like you know how they would come how would they, how they would come together and sort of cross pollinate to come up with something new and different i do that in my classroom too i i <laughs> present it to my my students as like the art imposter challenge and they Ooh. have to think about like oh what would what would it look like if monet painted guernica or something like that you know that sounds interesting alone just having like because having that kind of mashup like especially with what you were talking about like you know, with your first painting like that, that honestly makes sense. Like if there was a version of that painting done by like a Diego Rivera or something along the lines of that, because like, I feel like a lot of the morals of both of those cultures would like intertwine. And so like an interpretation of that would, would be something that you could see in that culture. So the fact that you took that on and that was your interpretation, that's actually smart. That is very smart. <laughs> I like to think so, although realistically speaking, looking back on that, there are some elements where it's like, mm, I went a little heavy handed on that one. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there are some things that like just the way that I added a figure or what, you know, whatever. It's just as as a child, you know, 20 year old child, I, <laughs> I do feel like I was a child at 20, 21. Um, like 
you're never as clever as you think you are. Right. And, and the things that you think you're laying out there that are like, oh, these subtle things, it's like, no, nah, I was really heavy handed with that. <laughs> Fair. I was like Picasso. <laughs> in the, I, I was I was almost gonna say in the worst possible way, but he was a monster. I wasn't that bad. But. Yeah, yeah, you know, understandable, <laughs> understandable. <laughs> Thinking back to some of the pieces that you've had, especially kind of the time and effort you put into there, is there a personal favorite art piece of yours? Um, you know, for me, it's all about. In case you haven't noticed, for me, it's always about stories. Yeah. <laughs> it's always about the story and the emotional resonance and stuff like that. And what really got me out of my own head and my natural pretentious proclivities to be like just deep and meaningful and esoteric and everything was like my children. Aww. And so um, one one day a few years ago, my, my son was um, – he was about five years old at the time. I was asking him what I should paint in his mural. Um, and he thought about it for a moment. He said, rainbow, puppies, science lab. Ooh. And it was just like, uh, how do how do I even make sense of this? But then I realized, like, that is the most brilliant art prompt ever. Just make a list of things that are awesome and just like make an awesome stack, you know? <laughs> and so, so I created, I created a, a, a drawing of, um, you know, a, a puppy as a scientist with rainbows and just like all sorts of stuff. And it was, it, it had some of the like patterning and the textures and the painted elements that I really like. And, you know, some, some of that stuff and the technique that I have always been drawn to from like modernist and postmodern movements, but like just put together in this like just fun imagery. It, it's like, you know, I, that's what I do these days is I, I do a lot of stuff that just makes me smile like a seagull playing a guitar. There you go. You know? <laughs> it, it's just the stuff that it's the stuff that doesn't have to be serious because in, in all honesty, I think, I think, uh, I think that the trivial minor things are really the stuff of life. That's the day to day stuff. And that's the stuff that you need more than anything. I think there's nothing more meaningful than something that makes someone smile. A so that's what I just a focus a on. Amen to that more than anything else. Just kind of having that, you know, thing that you can look at, and you just smile, just be happy with more than anything else. Like I know whenever I was looking at your pieces, that was definitely one of the ones, the one that obviously grabbed my attention is the one he has the header, kind of the, the dog astronaut on the moon, looking back at the earth or whatnot. That's just a, a lovely piece right there. Um, and I mean like, you know, I, I love the fact that for you, you talk about like telling stories with this kind of stuff. Is that more or less why you kind of went with the education route and decided to be a, a teacher with the, the art education to help, with these art stories and more or less like tell, try to translate these stories for kids to potentially understand. Uh, you know, art education I went into education because obviously I, I, I like engaging with ideas, mm -hmm. you know, that I, I, I'm sure that has come through already for anyone who is still listening as I've been prattling on for so much time. <laughs> but for me, education came about because I wanted to be doing something with my life that would be doing good for others. Now, initially, I was going to go into medicine, and I okay. had the realization that as much as it is noble work, you know, like my father was an ER doc. Okay. He did, he did great work and literally saved so many lives, but... Every day that he was doing good and helping people was because something just awful happened to somebody. You know what I mean? Somebody had a heart attack. Somebody, like, his Tuesday was, like, somebody's worst day of their life. Right. <laughs> and, you know, like, that takes a toll on you. Whereas in the education field, you're just helping people because they're there right. because we're, we're building them up every single day is the goal to build them up and help them to improve and grow and do better. And 
art education specifically, I have the flexibility to have a lot of fun right and be creative with people and the stakes are really low <laughs> i don't ever have to call a parent and say like your child can't read <laughs> you know what i'm saying like the worst i have to say is like eh, you could have colored that better yeah right right <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? like that's that, that that gives me the flexibility to have a lot more fun with them Absolutely. I mean, especially especially at that young of age when their creativity is probably at their highest or whatnot. Like that has to be just like both chaos but also fun to deal with at the end of the day. <laughs> oh, it's it's tons of fun. It is tons of fun. Like I say, I I try to I try to do a lot with like games in the classroom too. So like I've created various games like in my classroom on every Friday is a game day. So we do stuff like we, I made a version of double dare, but it's Ooh. like all art prompts. So like the, the, the physical challenges are like, you know, make a color wheel with things found around the room and stuff like that. Okay. Or, you know, a, a quick draw uh, type challenge, you know, draw something with a horizon line, something near, something far, all that. Um, or <laughs> like I set up black lights and I got neon yarn Ooh. and I created like this web of yarn and it's like the art, art heist challenge. You have to get past the lasers without <laughs> falling into the pit of doom and <laughs> all of this and like recover th the, the stolen artwork from my nemesis, Dr. Meanie bad guy. And like, <laughs> and, and like, it's the kind of thing that you can't do if you're teaching the real subjects but in art. It's it's creative. It's fun. We're making memories, and you know, at the end of the day, everyone gets a sticker and feels good about themselves. Absolutely, absolutely. Like I said, just just chaos, but both fun at the same time. So I have to wonder throughout all this chaos, especially wanting to encourage the you know the K through five to really get into art or whatnot. At what point did you decide to also include creating a podcast as part of all this fun? Okay, so that came about because, um, you know, I'm I'm the type of like in in, in a very real sense, um, education is my medium. Mm -hmm. I I I look at that as a way that I am that is a creative outlet. I'm figuring out ways to make the subject and and the educational process more fun engaging creative and all of that so i had been talking to the librarian at my school we both listened to podcasts and we had both been thinking about creating a podcast and teaching kids how to create podcasts right but you can't teach something if you don't know it if you haven't done it yourself so I, I, it started off as just like a, a little, you know, test run, like we're, okay, we're going to figure out how the software works. We're going to figure out how to, how to do these things so that we could run a podcast club at school. Okay. Um, and to give kids a, an opportunity, like, you know, one of the things in education is you're always trying to find different ways for kids to be able to show what they know. Right. Because there are lots of kids who they have the ideas, but maybe they can't write it. But if we give them the the opportunity to talk about what they know, you know, it, it's just another path for them to find success. Mm -hmm. So it started off as doing just that and and trying to figure out figure out how the whole thing works. And at the same time that I was trying to figure out how to make something work, I also wanted something that could be useful as a classroom resource, you know, mm -hmm. create like a little, a little media library so kids can learn about different stuff. And then uh, you might have heard of this thing that happened in like 2020, um, mm -hmm. COVID. Uh, familiar? I, you know the name rings a bell. I mean, I know it. Yeah. I, I I know it was a major event, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It kind of refreshed me on some of that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, so in in the education system, that was a little bit disruptive. You don't and say. We shifted to remote learning for quite some time, and it just seemed like it was a nice thing to have out there. Mm -hmm. And I actually had a couple of students who had messaged me over like Zoom school while we were like doing remote stuff. And some of, some of the kids had mentioned like, 
it's kind of nice to be able to hear a familiar voice while we're, you know, or uh, well, uh, like there were some students who, you know, said like, you know, sometimes I can't leave the house. So it's, I just, I'll color and it's nice to be able to hear this and learn a, bit, a little bit while I'm doing that. Like I heard from some parents that they liked it and some other art teachers were like, this is kind of nice to be able to play over Zoom during that like awkward period where you're just having the camera on and kids are drawing and coloring because a lot of the art class is independent work time, mm -hmm. but you need to be like on camera engaged with them. So that it would be something they could just play in the background. Right. Um, so that there's still something happening, but kids don't have to be like watching and listening so much, you know, while they're creating, but there still is content getting out there. And so it, it grew a little bit through that. And then um, what what really clinched it that's like, oh, I've got something here that I've got to keep going. Um, the Art uh, the art Explora Foundation mm -hmm. is like French art nonprofit had stumbled on my podcast. I don't know where <laughs> they were, they were launching a, um, an online learning platform, okay. the art Explorer Academy. And if you, if you've not heard of this and you're interested in learning about arts, it is incredible. Um, it's in English and French and it was developed in partnership with like the Louvre, the British museum. Okay. It's got like, they've, you can earn a certificate backed by like Sorbonne university and it's all free. Well, <laughs> they, they plucked like half a dozen episodes of my podcast and like put it in their media library along oh, with wow. some other stuff. So it was like, and and at first when I got the email, I'm like, yeah, whatever. You want to do something with my – I don't care. You know, I'm not making <laughs> money off this. Whatever. Throw it in whatever collection you want. And, and then I got an invite to their launch party at the Louvre, and I'm like, oh, my God. I cannot believe I can't go because it's a school night. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But if I was in that situation, I would just find some way to like, let the teachers know like, Hey, I got to take like a couple days off. I'm going to the Louvre. Do you, do you mind? <laughs> the, you know, in, in all seriousness, I did think about it, but the reality is it was, covid times and right, so like i okay. would have had to international travel i would have had to quarantine for weeks right, right and it was just like it was just it was not a feasible thing but like still surreal to see like that pop up <laughs> as an invitation and um i have been very very fortunate that just like i've gotten some some lucky breaks i don't feel like i've deserved all those lucky breaks but i'm i'm not above taking them yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, especially, you know, knowing that that foundation or whatnot was well, able to find your episodes or whatnot, I can easily understand why they clung to your podcast, listening to a good chunk of the episodes that I have when it comes to who arted. I mean, it's a wonderful, like, deep dive into an artist, like what they kind of more or less went through seeing a particular piece and kind of like the, the history and like, especially the banter that you have with some of the guests or having like that real deep dive into what exactly that, that the story that they're trying to tell or the mentality of the artist or whatnot. It's, it's easy to see why people could easily cling on to that. I mean, the, what first, in, I have to ask what first intrigued you to having that idea in the first place of just like telling that kind of story, if I may. Um, well, the format for the show, the first season was a little bit different. The first season, it was like the background I knocked my mic. There's probably a terrible shock and noise. <laughs> well, the the first season actually it was a little bit different than it is now. The first season, I started with like the background and then a discussion, and then I tried to share like takeaways, like okay. what you can do as your to learn from and apply to your own artwork, and then that just that just like that final segment just like wasn't landing with people, and it was um in all honesty, it was too hard to like, it made guests uncomfortable because a lot of my guests were just like random friends and <laughs> other teachers who were like, fine, I'll, 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 
I'll go on for an hour, you know, don't ask me art questions. You know? <laughs> um, because they were doing it as a favor because right. I'm, I'm surrounded by wonderful, kind, supportive people. I, I don't have an interesting backstory, you know, like <laughs> you read so many of these stories of different artists and it's like, they overcame this, they overcame that. And it, it was like, I, I had a, I had a lovely childhood growing up, you know, <laughs> i I, I drew on the walls and the only time my mother said she was disappointed was when I covered it up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, like she, she was like, you worked so hard on that mural. I can't believe you, you didn't even photograph it. Um, you know, it, it, it's one of those things where it, it just kind of evolved organically more or less. I just, I find that, needed a good story because that's how I relate to the arts and then I wanted I wanted to have another segment where a guest and I are talking about a work of art because I feel like that's where a lot of it's where a lot of people feel uncomfortable mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of people don't know how to talk about art because they worry like am I going to sound stupid if I didn't pick up on this and if I use the wrong word? Because in art, we use so many words in ways that make no sense. Right. I mean, value, value is the shading. It has nothing to do with the price. That's absurd. <laughs> true, you know? true. Um, but like, I want people to be able to hear just a natural, authentic discussion. And I want kids to learn like, well, this is how we engage with the arts. This is how we read a piece that, you know, in in education circles, we talk about like media literacy. How mm -hmm. do we break it down? How do we make sense of it? How do we read a work of art so that we can draw reasonably strong conclusions from it? It's, mm -hmm. you know, that critical thinking process. Right, right. So I, I have to ask this question. This was a question that was actually asked to me previously by uh, another podcast host, Christian Carrion, back when he was on the podcast. But, you know, art, especially for the art that you talk about, like, it's a very visual medium. Like, it's very easy to, to see the stuff and sort of, like, figure out the interpretation. Why did you go with a podcast to help translate that visual medium? Uh, well, it's a couple things. Um, one... I started off, like I said, trying to make something for my classroom. Okay. And so I was I was trying to learn the medium. And then as you're trying to learn the medium, well, you're going to be talking about the thing you know, right? Um, as far as why podcasting appeals to me over, like, videos on YouTube and stuff like that, I mean, I do have a YouTube channel, but that's more for, like, demonstrations of how to do projects right. and stuff like that. Um, in all honesty, like... I'm ugly. Nobody needs to see this face talking about art. Um, Don't sell yourself so, short. Come on. <laughs> so, so that that's a factor, um, and uh, you know, finally, it it's just there's something I really love about the absurdity of it, mm -hmm. and th that's why I start every episode. You know, welcome to Who Arted, where we explore visual arts in an audio medium. Yeah. It's just. It's just like it's so ridiculous that it makes me laugh every time. Although you can you can put out episode specific cover art as I'm sure right. you're well aware. And so I do put that into I do put episode cover art in there so if you're listening on, you know, Spotify, Good Pods, Amazon Music, anywhere that supports that feature, you can still see an image of the work we're talking about. Mhm. Mm Mm -hmm. I mean, absolutely. But I mean, even then, like, it, it's always I one of the reasons why I enjoy your podcast is, you know, even with like the, the visual aspect, you know, with that cover, and whatnot, just hearing more or less kind of, you know, yourself and your guests kind of their thought process whenever they're interpreting a piece, kind of seeing how they're able to relate or connect to it, how they interpret like what it's trying to say or what the artist is trying to say or whatnot. That's the part that I enjoy about who arted because like I can hear you guys having that discussion and maybe it could open my eyes to whenever I do actually see the piece and give me a whole different perspective on how to interpret that piece differently. You know, whenever I came on to talk about, uh, I weigh ways, uh, sunflower seeds. Like it was more or less like it opened my eyes. Cause I could have just looked at, you know, 
the 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 gravel that was the sunflower stone sunflower seeds or whatnot i could have just thought it was like a interpretation on like abundance or something along the lines of that but having the discussion that we had having your perspective or whatnot it really opened my eyes to what that piece really was i think there's also something about the fact that when you are talking about it you engage with it differently when the visual is not there and you're forced to describe the piece and identify what specifically you're connecting to and what inferences you draw from that. Um, you talk about it differently mm -hmm. for the listener. You're, you're focused on the ideas, not distracted by the visual. If that makes sense. No, that that makes sense. That really does make sense. And I mean, even thinking back to all the different artists and all the different pieces that you've talked about to give that interpretation, do you have a personal favorite uh, artist that you've had the opportunity to talk about on the podcast, or at least like a favorite piece that maybe an artist did on the podcast? Um, okay, so I my my favorite is almost always the last thing that i was looking at <laughs> because you know i'm 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 constantly reminded of just different things i i love but aside from like i've already talked about the burgers of calais and i'm not going to recount that story but i that's always a favorite of mine like vincent van gogh's starry night and mm -hmm. um one though that that i always love is um is Robert is is erased to Kooning. Okay. Because that's one where that's one where researching the episode, I, I did a one eighty on my interpretation and my understanding of it. Okay. And my opinion of it. I started off thinking that that was just absolute garbage. Because I first looked at it as just iconoclasm. Right. Like right. that's just mean, you know? Um but then the idea that he was trying to the idea that he was trying to go to something that was even more empty than a blank canvas as a way of creating like stillness mm -hmm. and that meditative quality and the idea that there needed to be a sense of loss. We lost something, a masterpiece from someone who was universally agreed to be a great artist. And so it's oddly honorific to say, we need to erase your work because your work is special. And when your name is attached to it and we know we lost de Kooning's work, then we know like it will resonate with people with that sense of loss and wonder about what masterpiece was previously there. Like th that to me is really interesting. Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially, yeah. Uh... A piece like that, goodness. Um, <laughs> I'm just also thinking, like, for me personally, whenever the, list, the episodes I have listened to or whatnot, I... Uh... Yes. And the Ai Weiwei thing was great. Too. That, that was a good one. I'll give you that one. The Andrew I mean, Fuller conversation was also most, a fun one. <laughs> most interesting man in the world. Did I tell you the Andrew Fuller reached out to me after that episode aired? I, I saw a note on it after the fact. So you're going to have to tell me this story. I, I, How did yeah. that go down? <laughs> he was the nicest guy. Okay. Nicest guy. But when the episode went live, um, he... he, he messaged me i had i had reached out to him prior to the episode when i was trying to do the research right and he was like off by one on on his birthday mm. yeah i i whatever source i had pulled that from he was like yeah i'm i'm 43 not 44 or whatever it was now i'm gonna have to is issue a correction for this interview because i don't have the notes in front of me but you know he was it was like i was off by one and he was like super nice and he he plugged it on instagram and stuff like that and and i i obviously fixed my mistake but um that was that was like one of those moments where it was probably two hours after it went live that i was like oh this kills me yeah i hate yeah. when i make a mistake i hate admitting a mistake was, you know whatever it, it was it was a fun episode though that we recorded together um so i would highly encourage listeners if you are curious and want to hear if you want if you want to hear um some great episodes of who arted check out the episodes on i y i way way and andrew fuller because the greatest guest in the history of my show <laughs> a 
appeared on those two. Okay, now you don't have to butter me up. You're already on this podcast. You're already. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I was gonna say like I enjoyed like the episodes I was on getting to talk about those artists or whatnot because like you know Andrew Fuller I I obviously kind of knew him because I watched you know is it cake you know getting that having that discussion yeah. really divulges that i way way was someone that i wasn't really familiar with so really getting to divulge myself into uh their artwork and really getting to learn about like the history I, like that's why i appreciate uh, it's one of the, it's another thing that i appreciate about the podcast really getting to like get a full body interpretation of like who the artist is and what they've gone through or whatnot i mean whether if it's like a serious artist you know like you know uh, someone that is highly respected and loved like an i way way or you know say what you will, Marcel Duchamp, you know, it's very mixed in the yep. world. I know to whether, or, or, you know, the ones I personally love, it's like the, the off the wall, oddball episodes you have here and there. Like, you know, Andrew Fuller was a good one. Having an, an episode dedicated to Mario is a bold move. If I do say so myself, <laughs> <laughs> it's great though. And I mean, and it's like I said before, I, I take those little things very seriously because mm -hmm. the little things are the stuff of life. You know, Mario, I love him. Love Mario. It's something I grew up with, and and then I've been... It, he's stuck around and evolved so I could enjoy him with my son. Yeah. And there's something really deeply meaningful that resonates with me personally, and I'm sure a lot of other people. And, and I think we do ourselves a disservice when we don't value the contributions and see the significance of people who are making the stuff that built our world. No, I mean, that's kind of what the Bauhaus was all about, right? Yeah. Taking that industrial design very seriously. Everything that we're interacting with, designer had a hand in. Yeah. And so I, I feel like that's worthy of respect, even if it's not something it's always going to go in a museum or that some people will scoff at if we put it in a museum. I mean, you know, Pokemon has been around for like 25 years and Pokemon cards outnumber humans like five to one. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so there's something there. There is something there. There definitely is. Now I, I have to ask, like you've had several seasons, you know, talked about several artists and several different art pieces or whatnot. Is there an artist that you've been pining at the bit to like tackle when it comes to like either what they've done or an art piece that you just love to just go all in with someone and talk about? Oh, uh, for a long time, I would have said Hilma off Clint. Hilma off Clint was on my list from the very beginning and nobody would talk about her. Okay. Um, I, I finally did a Hilma off Clint episode in the fall. Um, you know, I, I, there. If I take time to think about it, there are always more artists on my list. Mm -hmm. um, Mata is one that you know, Roberta Mata. Um, there's one uh, a piece of his that's at the Art Institute of Chicago called "The Earth Is a Man." It's this big abstract piece that just it's always resonated with me it was one that like when i was in in college i would i would sit and stare at and like i'd go up close and just like look at like how was this constructed how did he do this and then like what made him think to do this it was one that i puzzled over for so long i haven't done an episode on him or that work yet okay um so that's that's probably on my list um that i would like to get to at some point but okay. I could I could build out that list for days and days. So. <laughs> I can only imagine. I mean, just just thinking back, especially when it comes to you know just the journey you've kind of been on with this podcast, like certain that started as just like a fun little resource for your students to the point to where like you know you're getting thousands of downloads. You know, people are enjoying it. They're learning a lot. It's being recognized by you know the Louvre of all places and such. <laughs> like, does it amaze you more or less? Like the 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 journey this podcast has kind of taken you upon i i am always amazed that anybody listens to anything i have to say and part of that is because i am a father of two young children mm -hmm. and i have been teaching elementary for quite some time so i am very much accustomed to saying things that are completely ignored 
by, by a large audience. Um, it it's it's cool. I mean, you know, joining a network, going from like hobby that was costing me money to making tens of dollars a year. I, like <laughs> that's that's the dream, right? Yeah. Trust me, as someone it, it, that's trying to make those tens of dollars at some point, yeah, it's the dream right now. <laughs> but it it's fun. It's fun, and um, right now it's a little stressful. And uh, I'm about a I'm a few weeks away from the wheels just completely coming off because I'm putting out daily episodes in right. the run up to the Arts Madness tournament, and at the same time, I'm I'm doing. Um, I don't know why I planned season three of Art Smart to start releasing now. <laughs> um, so I've I've got a couple episodes like in the queue, but I'm also trying to line up these interviews. That's the worst part. That's the thing yeah. that it's just finding the time in the day and coordinating the schedule with someone else. Yes. Um, because I can I can get in front of the mic and ramble for so long. Um, if I'm doing a solo episode, but trying to find someone else to sit there and put up with me is the hardest thing in the world. And that's why I appreciate you uh, have always had a good attitude <laughs> that Andrew <laughs> Fuller one. I was like, I was texting. I, I sent you a message like the day before. I'm like, uh, I need to record an episode this weekend. Um, <laughs> can you show up tomorrow at noon and I'll tell you who we're talking about? And I just have to say, bet. Let's go. <laughs> and, and you're like, yep, I'm I'm down. And and that's what that's one of the things that's really been pleasantly surprising is how many people I've met through podcasting and podcasts who are just nice. Are good people willing to help each other out, like, you know, sharing each other's episodes, being guests on each other's episodes, um, and just pr pretty much everyone I've reached out to has been nice. And, like, you don't see that or you don't hear that story with social media so much. We, we're we constantly in, inundated with how, you know, Twitter and Instagram are and Facebook are creating these toxic cultures and stuff like that. And there are pockets of it where people are making these genuine connections and just being nice to each other. I, I wish there were like a pro social app where yep. like you could just be like, just where everyone just agrees, like, just don't be a jerk. You know, <laughs> like just, just be nice and like, let, let the rest of the social media burn. But I am thankful for the podcast community I've been finding where people are supportive of each other. No, that's not everybody, but it's been my experience with the people I've interacted with so far. Right. As right. a company included. <laughs> Again, you're too kind. You're already on the podcast. You don't need to keep buttering me. <laughs> no, I... Like my experience, at least, you know, hopping on your podcast again, it's just been fun for me to get to just have these fun conversations, getting to really, you know, chit chat with you, get to learn so much in a short amount of time relatively. Cause most of your episodes, Kirk and Formog are about like 30 minutes long. So like learning so much in such a short amount of time, it, it it's a good fun opportunity that, you know, if there's anyone out there that is curious and might want to potentially reach out to Kyle, if Kyle is accepting, <laughs> I would highly recommend if you want to you know, just spend 30 minutes and either listen to the podcast or, hey, even show up on an episode if he's interested. You know, he, he runs the show. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I I appreciate that because I, I know I'm sure a lot of your audience is, is artists and stuff like that. And. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm, I'm always happy when I talk to other artists who can share their insights. Like I had an artist, um, and, and the thing that I like to do is make people a little uncomfortable. So like I'll, I'll plug their pluggables, but I don't, I don't bring them on to talk about their own artwork. I think it's so cool when we get to talk to artists about the stuff that influenced them. So like right. I had Lindsay Little who developed the Oni Girl comics, web comics and okay. stuff like that. And she was talking about uh, Jim Davis, the guy who created Garfield. Mm -hmm. And, how, you know, she also shared a little bit about her process and like how she develops characters and those insights. But I do like bringing people on who can talk about like how an artist influenced them. Like that's a cool story too. So. Absolutely. I, I'm going to recommend a guest to you 
uh, personally because I know that they also have a deep love for um, art history as a whole. Um, it is a person, uh, they're a VTuber as well. They go by Pinch Raccoon. Um, it's one of those like. I, I like part of their gimmick as their like VTuber persona or whatnot is that like they're an art thief. So it's like, you know, they, they love and appreciate like art and stuff like that. <laughs> but um what was it? Recently they actually dedicated like an entire stream to just talking about Vincent Van Gogh. Like just talking about like his life and his struggles and the art pieces and like having the chat interacting with like their interpretations of art pieces or whatnot. Like it was a really cool experience. And I think having them on the podcast would be fun. Well, you should definitely pass on my pass on my info then. Just if you if it's a friend of yours, if you know them, pass it on. Uh, who arted podcast at gmail dot com, and you know we will make that happen. Absolutely, absolutely. But you know, stepping back a little bit further, not just with the podcast, but your art journey as a whole. Since you really decided to really delve into this path, you know, does it amaze you as well how far you've been able to come along and how much of uh, and how much of an impact art has had on your life? You know, I, I'm always, always a little bit amazed. Like I said, when anybody enjoys something that I make, you know, that, that is a feeling that like, I, I can't put into words like that, the validation that comes from that. Um, it's not what I would have predicted. It, <laughs> it really is not. Um, I remember in second grade doing like one of those art awareness things, you know, we learned about Monet and I went home and I told my dad, I'm like, I'm going to be an artist when I grow up. And he's like, you're going to be poor. (laughs) And (laughs) he loves when I tell that story. Yeah. Um, it, it makes it makes him sound so much less supportive than he really is. He is a fantastic person. Right, like I said, right. I, I had a wonderful supportive supportive family and friends and um you know, he was the type of person who would he would just tell me like he would tell me bluntly that like you know, most artists aren't really successful until after they're dead and it's a really rough career and if that's what you want to do be prepared to go through some hard times and and it you know what i've found is that's the conventional wisdom from people who don't really understand all of the different ways that art is a part of all of our lives right right you know and and part of it gets into how do you define art you know, because art is so many different things. When most people talk about it, when most people say artist, they're thinking of a studio artist who's making sculptures and paintings and, and other things that are for a gallery and that small sliver of the art market. But in reality, you know, art is the product of creativity and art comes in so many different forms. And art is like a, a woodworker who's crafting a table is an artist mm-hmm. you know the the architect designing our homes and our schools and our hospitals like those people are artists as well like it's so many different forms and i you know like i said i i think of myself a little bit as a visual artist but primarily the medium that i'm working in these days I feel like is education and then that's my outlet for creativity above all else. And that's where I find the satisfaction. There we go. There we go. Uh, wonderfully worded. If I do say so myself, Kyle, we've been talking a lot about just, you know, art and art history and art education, all different aspects of it or whatnot. But for this next question, if I may, I want to give you more or less the dream scenario. Let's say I am big shot, Mr. Moneybags. I come up to you like, look, Kyle, we know you can do some incredible stuff. We've listened to the podcast several times over. We know that there's something incredible there. You just need a little extra boost, a little extra push to really get you over the edge for something truly incredible. We have access to anyone and everyone in whatever field possible. And more money than should be possible. We should probably be helping so many teachers gain so many supplies to their classrooms. We'll focus on that in a second. Right now, we are focusing on you and you alone. If given this opportunity, what would be the Dream Kyle project? Uh, so that's that's a tough one. 
like, you know, I, I could get into like the dream interview or the dream, the dream project. Um, I would be so happy to be just painting a giant canvas. Actually, in, in, a, in a weird way, I had a dream project came up over this last summer. Okay. Um, my school had hired a muralist, and the muralist, like, was almost like a, a cliche of the flight, the flighty artist. Mm. And so, like, they, the parent organization finally just got to the point where they're like, um, we can't, we can't deal with this anymore. So they came to me and they're like, can you, can you paint us a mural? We did this fundraiser off of it. We need to fit a couple hundred kids handprints in there. We need it done in a month and you knock this out. So I got to paint like a giant mural, um, and just like bright and colorful and cartoonish and the, the wonderful community vibes that like, I really love, um, you know, our, our school's motto for years has been heroes choose kind. You know, we, we focus a lot on, on kindness and welcoming of others and, and that positive atmosphere and that positive vibe. And so getting to make a giant community piece, um, sending a positive message, that's, for me, that's what it's all about. It's all about that positive impact and so that was a dream scenario. So for me, like the dream project would be something along those lines. It would be a big high profile painting. Like I can, I can just, I, I love to paint. I love to get into the details of that. I love to just sit like, that's almost a meditative act for me, you know, um, and to just put on my headphones and zone out and just be focused on that process. But to do that in a way that's like large format, community based, I think that would be for me the dream. That would be awesome to see, especially, you know, hearing the experience you've had before and like what more you could potentially do and the influence you could potentially add to those murals. That that just makes me excited to see if you get that opportunity at some point. But Sadly, we got to get down from the dream scenario. We got to get back to reality. And I'll ask the ever so generic question. Where do you hope to see yourself, say, five to ten years from now? Um, so this is this is a question that I, I hate to answer, in all okay. honesty. And the reason for that is... Um, like it, it's a fair question and I, I get why you would ask it. The, the reason that I, I hate to answer it is it, there, I don't have a way of saying this that doesn't sound obnoxious. Okay. Because the, the, the truth is I am extremely privileged. And so where I want to be five years from now is here. Okay. Like the the school that I am working in, the community that I'm working in is wonderfully supportive. And like I I'm not one of those teachers who's like hoping to climb the ladder and get into admin and then get the big bucks for being a superintendent or something right, like that. Right. Like like I I love my job and the kids that I work with and getting to see them for six years and see the growth happening over time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like I'm you know, would I like a, a nicer house and would I like more downloads on my podcasts? Of course. But like I, I the big stuff, like I honestly, I want to be here. Yeah. I'd like to be a better version of this. Right. You know, right. Like if you can reconfigure this face, that would be glorious. <laughs> but if we're getting to reality, it's going to be this just uh, five years wrinklier. Yeah. I mean, at, <laughs> Jesus. I, I mean, at the end of the day, you're just more or less content where you are right now. Like you, you've got, you, you've got a, a great position where you are right now, both like personally and professionally or whatnot. I can see why having more or less the same, that doesn't sound obnoxious. That just sounds pleasant. That sounds nice. I, I sincerely hope you get to keep this nice, good, happy environment you're around more than anything else. Yeah. There you oh. go. That's what I got. There you go. There you go. 
As we start to wind down the interview, I just have one last question I want to ask you, Kyle. Obviously, you've been deeply entrenched in art for for ages now. For you know, for you know, like really all in, you know, for a while. How important is art, not just for you, but for the world as a whole? I say this with, with, and I don't mean this hyperbolically. Art is the most important thing in all of human history. Art is both how and why we got out of the trees. I mean, art, that creativity, that is our capacity to envision a better tomorrow and to communicate that with others right like it's how we it's how we plan it's how it's how we evolve it's how we grow like without that i don't i don't know where we are you know what i mean absolutely yeah <laughs> goodness yeah you know that that's that's a good way to word it that that's i mean you know it's like you like you were talking about especially like throughout history like goodness like Imagine, imagine the world that we would have if art did not lead the way one way or another, you know? Well, I, I, if I, if I recall correctly, like, I, I think, um, I think art is part of how the early humans developed communication, right? Like developed that region of the brain and, you know, that is, is bonding and that is, you know, that is everything that makes us who we are. So, like, like I say, I, I, I think it is central to who we are as humans. Even if I think the oldest art was recently found to have been created by Neanderthals. I mean, e- <laughs> either way, I, if nothing else, that's that's still very important. I still think the importance of that is still stated wonderfully by you, and it's a wonderful way to word it. If I do say so myself. Um, Thank you. Kyle, that is all the questions that I have for you. Um, I've showered you with a whole bunch of praise, but I'm going to show you with a little bit more because it's my podcast. I do what I want. Um, <laughs> look, Kyle, ever since you know we first got in contact whenever I uh, first appeared for the I Weiwei episode, I have been amazed with the work you've put into this podcast, that, uh, for your podcast, Who Arted, and the amount of fun and information and intrigue that you bring with just about every single episode that you do like i i've thoroughly enjoyed the discussions you've had whether it's a solo episode or with guests or whatnot i've enjoyed the perspective you've been able to present to the world and i just appreciate the fact that there are people such as yourself out there really putting the effort out there to to make sure that this stuff is is a a beacon for people that want to truly love and appreciate art i think you are providing a great resource for people that if they aren't already should truly indulge into and really get to learn about some incredible artists and, you know, the, the struggles that they may have had or the triumphs they may have had, you know, celebrated, you know, their emotions that they put out on full blast. The way you present the podcast is a great way of doing that. The way that you break down like the history of the artist, the way that you break down these pieces, the, 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 good vibe and energy that you bring with just about every single guest that you brought on. You're doing a great job hosting this podcast. And I truly appreciate the fact that you put yourself out there like that. So all I just want to say is keep up the awesome work, keep up the incredible stuff and thank you for what you do. Thank you for your time. And thank you for, thank you for providing this to people. I got to say right back at you, man. I, (laughs) I appreciate the, the good vibes that come from your show and the way that you are lifting up artists in all media, in all, like, you know, we've, we've joked about this before. Like you and I are like the only guys who are, who are creating art podcasts that are recognizing the artistry of all of these different things. Like I, I've I've seen some some stuff on yours. Was it a wrestler or yep. something like you had? Like yep. you've had so many different things that people don't think of as art, but it is it is it is a creative pursuit. It is worthy of respect, and I I appreciate that you are recognizing and lifting up people in in all stages of their career, in all different media, in all different ways. So thank you. 
Why? Well, once again, I really do appreciate the kind words. Again, you don't have to butter me up. You're here. We we've gotten to the <laughs> end of the podcast. Like you, 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 we did a great episode. Like you don't have to keep smothering me with all these wonderful, wonderful compliments. And <laughs> but I do sincerely appreciate the kind words. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, man. Now, if people want to know more about, you know, this podcast that we've been discussing, you know, throughout and, you know, learn more about what you do and the, the artists you like to also bring up, go ahead and plug your stuff for the people at home. Uh, you can find uh, Who Arted Weekly Art History for All Ages and my other podcast, Art Smart, on uh, whatever podcast app you're listening on. Um, you can also go to whoartedpodcast.com or artsmartpodcast.com. There we go. There we go. And yeah, if you miss any links or anything like that, I, I got you covered. It'll be in the description down below. Um, do you have any final words before we sign off? I'll just, I, like I said, I, I appreciate the, the positivity, the warmth, the kindness, you know, that's what we need more of. So I appreciate that you bring it out and put it out in the world. And I, you know, the feeling is very mutual with yours, especially with the positivity, especially with the art, because at the end of the day, you illustrate it. Art is one of, if not the most important thing of human history, and it needs to be emphasized. It, it needs to be emphasized and appreciated more, at least in my eyes. So I think we're both doing a good job doing that. <laughs> yeah, we're pretty awesome. There you go. There you go. <laughs> with that, all I have left to say is for the people at home, hasta luego, mi amigos. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end. If this is your first time listening, I greatly do appreciate you sticking to this point. Kyle has been someone that has really, uh, really warmed up to me when it comes to the podcast community. I know I, I make a fairly strong presence when the art community, or I make a good presence in the art community, but when it comes to the podcast community, I'm trying as hard as I can to be more and more involved with that as well. I mean, I think I've had a good foothold in it at times you know i was a part of a podcast network for a little bit i've been able to guest on several incredible podcasts but honestly uh with kyle and who arted i cannot tell you how much i appreciate their their warm presence they're warming how what's the word i'm looking for how welcoming that he seems to be especially for what he is doing and the the cool content that he's presenting um kyle if you've made it up to this point uh thank you once again for being a part of this um i cannot thank you enough uh i know i did the same for you at one point when we did the andrew fuller episode but that that doesn't mean that i still don't appreciate what you've done with what you're doing and for being a part of this fun little ride I will also say part of the reason why I wanted to bring you on is because I know on Twitter you were making a joke about um, when I made a joke about AI art, how boring it would be to interview robots and your joke about us well, because you haven't had me on the podcast yet. Well, I proved it wrong because we had a great conversation. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, now, when it comes to the podcast community, guys, I, I if this is the only podcast that you listen to one, I, I do appreciate it. I really do. But secondly, like, take the time to explore a little bit, you know? I, I personally find that podcast creation is an art form on its own at times, and I sincerely think you guys should, if you have the time for it, like, invest in a couple more. There's a couple of, like, really good, really fun podcasts out there. I'll go ahead and list some of my favorite ones. Um, tell us about yourself. A uh, Interviews with... Game show contestants. If you remember from episode 57, guess Christian Carrion. That's his podcast. He's still doing incredible stuff. And this new venture he's gone on, absolutely should listen. Telehell. If you wanted a podcast that is a beautifully edited, talking about the absolute horrors that were, you know, bad TV shows and just bad TV in general, that is one that I cannot recommend enough. 
I'll also go ahead and shout out Go Fact Yourself. That is an instant listen every single time they drop a brand new episode. And, like, the fun that they have with their guests and the experts and all stuff like that. Uh, you know, a fun little casual game show kind of vibe or whatnot. It's one you guys need to listen to. Th- there are so many incredible podcast out there it's almost like youtube videos you know how there's some like video essays that you know can take people you know hours to listen to they have that with podcasts and i sincerely hope you guys like take the opportunity to like expand what you guys are expand your listening listenership i guess would be the best way to word it go out there and support some of these podcasts support incredible creators support other artists they are artists just like you guys are artists. You guys are doing incredible stuff and keep up the awesome work. Show love and support for everyone in this community. Love and support is how we are going to grow. And especially in these days and these times where it's so easy for stuff to get lost in translation, things get bogged down because of so many different issues that we do not have any control over or whatnot. Show that love and support. I know you guys have it in you. And you guys are doing incredible stuff. Keep showing that incredible love and show it to others.